I'm Al Phil Reese. I'm Anna Safford. And this is Mod Po Minute, actually five minutes. We're hoping to scratch the surface of a short poem that we like. So let's get started. Well, I'm with Kate Colby. Hi, Kate. Hi, Al. Welcome back to the Writer's House. We're Oh, it's great to see you. And we are talking about a poem by Tom Devaney called Poem Written in an Airport. And it's from his book, Runaway Goat Car, 2015. So I'll read the poem, then we'll talk about it. Poem Written in an Airport. Either you put the paperclip on or the pen will bleed red. Either I look out the window or write the best poem of my life. Either the tape will stick or the leaves will remain until winter. Either the photos will make you cry or you will call an old friend in California. Either the aloe will smooth your skin, soothe your skin, or you will be back in grade school. Either the song will go on in tonight or you will wake up without music. Kate, it's such an alluring pattern, either or. Can you say something general about why a poet would try this either or strategy? Um. Well, to me, this poem is about upshots of minute choices, mm. and that's kind of what a, a poet documents mm. in a lot of ways, is the process of, of the choices made in the poem. And they're that's quirky. Poets are quirky people, and so their choices are quirky either or. Pick one that's particularly alluring quirky. Alluring. Yeah. Um, well, the last two lines, either the song will go on in tonight or you wake up without music. But that's sort of like the pan out, whereas the, some of the earlier couplets, um, either the aloe will soothe your skin or you will be back in grade school. Okay, that's really stretchy, interesting, memory oriented. Can you do anything with that? What is it? Is it what's um, it saying? It's, not, mean, a, it's either, not a cause and effect. It's not an obvious No, no, no. But... Um, I mean, it's like ministering to oneself, mm -hmm. which um, elicits a memory of being ministered to as a child. So, so it's kind of not an either or. By that point, it's kind of the either or structure is morphed into a uh, and. And, but the the most straightforward either or is the first one. If you don't put a paperclip on the pen because you've rigged rigged some way to keep the pen from bleeding. Oh the ink will spill out. So that's like straightforward, though quirky. How about this, the next one? This is a good one to talk to a poet about. Either oh, well I that, look out the window yeah, or... Yeah, I mean, but, that, that's, that's the process of writing a poem. Like, every moment you're fighting the impulse to look up out the window or record something you see there. I mean, that's... And ironically, if it's either or, if you look at the window, you might not write the poem of your life because you're looking out the window. But then you need to look at the window in order to write a poem. Right, and then you forget the thing that you were thinking because you're looking out the window, and but what you see out there prompts your next thought. So it it just goes back and forth, back and forth. It's Long funny time. how Tom Devaney is playing with the either or logic. Let's do one more, and then I have sort of a general question for you. Either the Either the photos will make you cry, or you will call an old friend in California. What do you make of that? It's a nice one. Well, either you'll stay there weeping over your memories, or it will, you know, it, it will spark an impulse to call the friend that you're thinking about. And poem written in an airport, so the title either doesn't do anything, it's just a kind of John Ashburyan. Well, title or everything that happens here is something you might be pondering while you wait for your plane. Well, an airport is the ultimate site of self-suspension. You're kind of between uh, <laughs> yes. places, sites. Um, we don't know if he's in arrivals or departures. Um, it's a it's a complete suspension of the self. And the tape sticking. I mean, there we either either there's some awful artificial plant in the airport terminal, <laughs> or he's just gone somewhere else. I mean, I, I have this idea. I always like to narrativize these things, right? So I have this idea that you you put leaves, I don't know, you tape leaves up to a plant. Either the tape will stick, or the leaves will remain. Or is it work. like a cassette tape? Do, did cassette tapes stick? 
Or did I don't the think we would say just, stick. No. So that's <laughs> one remember. we don't. That's the one we don't know. But I guess my last question for you is, you know, a, as a poet, if you come up with a strategy, this either or, either either or, is a very useful um, strategy for non sequitur thoughts that become sequitur because of the structure. Uh huh. It's very tempting, right? I mean, sure, you, you're probably going to go home today thinking, I should write a poem based on... But, but would you carry it all the way through? I have a feeling you wouldn't carry it all the way through, and he did. I don't know. I'm an and-or person. I... <laughs> <laughs> you mean you take, I both, really... you take both options? Yeah. Um, yeah. I love um, the sort of chaos slash butterfly effect of this poem. Yeah. Like the, well, like I said, the minute upshots of, of small choices. Yeah. And how he gets them down here. Yeah. I really like the way the last couplet or the last line, last pairing, gives us what, what you might see in a conve more conventional lyric poem, but it does so after all of this relative experimentation of digressive thinking. Well, it pans out from small things to this sort of truism yeah. about life in general. That's yeah. how you could also read yeah. this one. Kate, thank time. you so much thank for you. talking with me about this poem. If you liked this episode, watch another and subscribe. And join us for ModPo, a free and open course at modpo.org.